Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to be doing the derivation for the present value form. So here below you can see this is the present value formula. You don't have to memorize it, it will be on your formula sheet. So let's get into it. First let's have a look at the difference between the present value and the future value. So the future value we've discussed in another video. I'm going to be putting the, the link up here somewhere on the right that you can click on. But with the future value, we dealt with periodic payments. So every month or year, whatever it may be, you're putting money into this account. And each payment generates a different amount of interest because it depends how long it's been in. So payments at the very beginning are going to generate more interest than the ones at the end. And in the account, all of that, the payments and the interest gets all put together and you get a value at the end. All right, so very important future value deals with the value at the end. But today we're doing the present value. But the present value says, if you don't want to deal with the shenanigans of investing money every month and remembering to do that and all of that stuff, if we just want to work out how much can I just invest now instead of doing all of that, but I still want to end up at the same value at the end. So that's what the present value deals with. So it deals with something called the present value of money. So think about this. If I had to give you 100 Rand now, would you prefer that? Would you prefer if I gave you 100 Rand in a month? Which one is worth more to you? So money in the present is worth more. And the reason for that in general, so not using the example I just gave you, is because money in the present can be invested and it can earn interest. Money in the future can't be invested now. So it loses out on some of its value. So money in the present is worth more. So that's what the present value deals with. So let's look at this in a timeline. So we're going to be using this formula here in the top right. So this P, so often teachers call it the principal value, but it's also our present value. So I'm going to be putting a PV here. So it's our present value or principal. So it's what we currently have. And this A is the amount at the end. So we can call it our future value. So we invest our present value over time. It becomes our future value. So let's put this together in a, a timeline over here. It's a general timeline. And let's say we invest 100 Rand every month. So you'll remember our conditions. We have to start after one month. So we don't start here at zero. We start after one month. And our last payment's at the end of our last month. So what I should have done first is we need to be working with this formula over here. So what are we working with today? Present value. So I need to make the present value the subject of this formula. So to do that, I just divide both sides by this. So this is to find my present value, I just take my future value and divide it by one plus i to the n. So we're going to be using that. So with the present value, we work backwards. So our present is here at zero. So we want to find out how much this money is worth to us presently. So we're going to take this one one month back. This one has to go two months back. This one goes three months back. And then finally, this one goes four months back. So one month, two months, three months, and four. So let's work out the present value for this 100 grand over here. So this 100 grand over here. So we know that the present value, I'm going to be calling it the present value of one, so this 100 rand. We know it's equal to its future value, which is 100, because this is the value in the future. So one month in the future, this is the value. So that's our future value, 100. Then let's say our interest is 10% per month, so 0, 0,1. So 10% per month, and the reason it's per month is because we're dealing with each of these monthly. So. 0, 0,1. And how long are we moving back? We're moving back one month. So this would be to the power of one. Then to work out the present value of this investment over here, it's the exact same because the future value is the same. It's 100 Rand. But now we have to take it back two months. So we put it to the power of two. And I, I'm sure you can see the pattern over here. So just like we did in the future value uh, video, we're going to be using a geometric sequence because we want to add all of these present values. So we have present value of one, two, 
and we're going to get the prison value of whoops the prison value of three and the prison value of four and we want to work out what all of those are worth so to work out the sum of these four terms we're just going to say the prison value one plus prison value two plus prison value three plus prison value four so let's get into that if we look at a general timeline we're going to have uh, time zero time one time two we're going to skip a bit and our last one will be n this will be n minus one and this one will be n minus two so just like last time don't stress about this too much it's just you don't have to memorize this or anything it's just so to help you understand where the formula comes from so if you're not understanding this part with the ends to the right it's okay as long as you understand the basics of the geometric sequence let me let me show you what i'm talking about so if we complete this and we're making monthly payments now instead of 100 rand let's call it x so if we do this and we work back all of these payments we work back all of these payments. So when we do that, we work out the present value of this one. So I'm going to add all of them together. So I'm going to say the, the sum of all these present values. So the sum of these n terms. So I know this one will be x over 1 plus i to the power of 1 because it's moving back one month. This one will be two months. And you get the process. So I want to find the present value of this x. So I've just done that over here, but now to get the present value of this x that I've circled, we have to work out over here. So it's x over one plus i. Now we're going back two periods. And if we had to do that for, let me add one more here, this one. So this one we have to take back three months. So it's one plus i to the three. Then if we go and we skip some time, we know we will get this x over one plus i to the end. So what I was talking about before is we only need this part over here to see our geometric sequence. So don't worry too much about what I have uh, what I have here on the end. We only need this thing over here that I've highlighted for us so to understand our geometric sequence. So if we look at this, we can see that our first term, this is our first term. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put this on the next slide for us and we'll work from there. But like I was saying in the previous slide, this term over here is our first term. So we know that this is a x over 1 plus i. So we know that's our first term. And the, the thing is we're going to be using this formula here at the top right. So this is the sum of n terms for a geometric series. And this thing we have here is a geometric series. So our first term is a, and r is our common ratio. And you can see here, every time we're multiplying by one over one plus i. So our common ratio is one over one plus i. And that's how this term, this power is increasing every time because we're multiplying each successive term with this. So now that we have that, we're gonna be using the sum of n terms. So let me change my color here. So we're gonna be using the formula for the sum of n terms. So we're going to put our a, our first term, which is x over 1 plus i. We're going to open up a big bracket, and we're going to have, so we don't actually need this one. We're going to have, what oh, we do. We're going to have 1 over 1 plus i, because this is our r. That's our r over there. It's the power of n minus 1. And then at the bottom, we have our r, which is 1 over 1 plus i minus 1. So we're going to work with this a bit. So our first term stays in the front like this. And we can rewrite this term over here by using our exponent laws. So we can just write this as 1 plus i to the minus n minus 1. And here at the bottom, we have a lowest common denominator. So we're going to get 1 minus 1 plus i, like this. So if we keep working with this, So at the bottom, what we're left with is we're going to end up with minus i over 1 plus i. So let's continue to the next slide. So I've just copied what we had before on the previous slide. If we continue with this, 
what we're going to do is we're going to take out a negative from the top. If we take out a negative, we're left with this. Because it, these two will swap if we take out a negative. And what we're left at the bottom is i over 1 plus i. So this should be negative i. So what's going to happen now, these two are going to cancel. So when they cancel, what we're left with is this. So those two minuses cancel over i over 1 plus i. That's an i. So what you'll see now is this can move just down here. It can move down there because it's already in the denominator. So when we move it, I'm going to continue here on the right for us. When we move it, so it doesn't need to be there. So the top stays the same. But what we have at the bottom now is 1 plus i. So that was our denominator under here. But now it's timesing over here. And then you'll see this is over 1. So these can cancel. And when those cancel, we're left with x, 1 minus 1 plus i, to the negative n, over i. And this is just our formula for present value. So that's how we derive the formula for present value.